Good morning and welcome to the State Emergency Centre. I'm joined for this update uh, on the major emergency uh, with regards to extreme weather uh, and flooding in South Australia uh, by uh, the Chief Officer of the State Emergency Service, Chris Beattie, uh, Assistant Commissioner Ian Parrott and Paul Lanio, who's a hydrometeorologist and the Senior Forecaster with the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, as all South Australians would be aware, uh, following a meeting at the State Emergency Centre uh, last Thursday, the Police Commissioner declared uh, a major emergency uh, for up to 14 days in South Australia to uh, cover uh, the response to the very uh, heavy rainfalls and flooding that we've been experiencing in South Australia over the past uh, week. Um, this has been going well. Uh, there's been a major recovery operation underway right across uh, those areas which uh, have been affected. And fortunately today, we need to provide a further update uh, with regards to the forecast for the next 72 uh, hours. Uh, we are monitoring uh, the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, thunderstorm activity and the potential for further rain and flooding in South Australia. In fact, uh, we are told that we should be expecting between 50 and 100 mils uh, in the north of the state. In fact, it could be as high as 200 mils uh, in the north of the state. And of course, this is going to further exacerbate the already difficult situation uh, that we are envisaging. We've got flood watch at the moment uh, for the northwest and the northeast pastoral area. Uh, further rain uh, forecast uh, for uh, the pastoral areas as well as the Flinders district uh, here in South Australia. And um, we also know that there's a forecast for very significant thunderstorms, which we're going to be monitoring uh, over the next 24, 48, 72 uh, hours. Uh, our primary concern at the moment uh, is making sure that we can recover our corridors in South Australia. At the moment, uh, both the uh, rail corridor uh, to the Northern Territory and Western Australia is out. Uh, we have significant damage to the Stewart Highway north of Glen Danbo, and this is essentially cutting off uh, access of critical supplies uh, north uh, of Glen Dambo uh, into communities like Coobapiti and of course the Ananu Pitinjara Yunkinjara uh, area of uh, this state. We have been uh, successful at working with the Australian Defence Force uh, for an emergency drop of uh, essential uh, provisions into Coobapiti and that could occur uh, over the next 24 hours. We're very grateful for our friends in the Australian Defence Force who have been helping South Australia, first of all with the uh, bushfires of course, uh, then our response to coronavirus and now to these extreme uh, weather events. Uh, we of course uh, want to send a very strong message to all South Australians that unless you need uh, to be travelling in the north of South Australia, please stay away. Uh, this is a very dangerous situation. The Department of Infrastructure and Transport is doing everything they possibly can at the moment uh, to create safe uh, passing uh, access, I suppose, to the north of the state and then uh, further into the Northern Territory, but it remains very, very difficult. If you do need to travel, you need to make sure that you are fully provisioned uh, because people can uh, be stranded at very, very short notice. But my key, key message to South Australians today is do not travel unless you need to be travelling uh, at the moment. We have been able to secure an alternative uh, heavy vehicle uh, access into the Northern Territory. That's been approved by the National Heavy uh, Vehicle uh, Regulator. Uh, we have now got damage reported in 45 council areas across South Australia. Uh, this is why the major emergency was declared on Thursday. Our concern at the moment is the further extreme weather and rainfall events that are forecast over the next 72 uh, hours. Uh, this is a tough time uh, for the West Coast, in particular the north uh, of the state, uh, where um, these are the areas which have been uh, most hard hit. We're standing shoulder to shoulder with these communities at the moment, but the next 72 hours is going to be absolutely crucial. I'm now going to pass over uh, to uh, the Chief Officer of the State Emergency Service, uh, Chris Beatty. Well, over the last uh, eight days, uh, the State Emergency Service uh, staff and volunteers have been uh, working hard to coordinate response efforts across the state, particularly in the north of the state, uh, following the severe weather that we've had that's impacted our rail networks and the, uh, the Stewart Highway and Outback Roads. As the Premier said, uh, we've got a very close eye on the next 72 hours of weather and we're monitoring the Bureau's models on thunderstorm and anticipated rain as a deep low pushes 
across the northwest of the state and uh, covers our northwest pastorals, northeast pastorals, and into the Flinders. This event has the potential for significant rain, and at this stage, we're anticipating anywhere between 50 to 100 mils in a day and up to 200 mils over a 72 hour period. Now, clearly, if that rainfall, that level of rainfall, coincides with existing damage to our road networks or to the rail infrastructure, it's just going to continue to exacerbate uh, those challenges, particularly with our supply chain. A flood watch warning is in place, and as a result, we do have concerns that this next front will lead to additional damage to these road and supply networks and increase some of the economic impacts that South Australia is feeling as a result of the freight disruption. In terms of what we know and doing, um, the Department of Infrastructure and Transport is working very hard to restore access to the north. The highway does remain closed at Glendambo, um, and it still has uh, water up to half a metre in places covering uh, the pavement. Engineers are continuing to assess the substrate and the, and the pavement integrity, and we'll be working with DIT to get that highway open as soon as we can. Unfortunately, we've had reports of some motorists disobeying road closure signs. And overnight, there were a number of uh, truck drivers uh, who breached those road closure signs uh, south uh, across that damaged road. It's critical that motorists be aware that this is not only extremely dangerous in terms of the uncertainty with respect to the road structure, but could also exacerbate the existing damage. So we encourage all motorists to obey the road closure signs. As the Premier mentioned, uh, it was very pleasing to see the National Heavy Regulator gazette and approve a new alternate uh, heavy vehicle route through New South Wales, Queensland and into Darwin. That route has been uh, open for the last 24 hours and we do have freight re-diverted uh, via that new route. Uh, there has been some reports that there are delays on that route with flooding at the border of Queensland, but the latest advice I have is that the trucks are still moving and the Heavy Vehicle National Regulator is investigating and looking at some alternatives to speed up the transit. The ARTC is continuing to assess and coordinate the restoration of damage to the rail and rail verge east of Tarkula. They are engaging with the Australian Defence Force and we are looking at options for the Defence Force to provide additional support to speed up that restoration. At this stage, we still forecast that the rail will not be reinstated until sometime after the 14th of February. That said, with the pending weather, there is a possibility that this may be delayed further, particularly if there is more impacts in that location. The Premier mentioned uh, some support from the Defence Force with regard to essential food supplies. I can advise that the SES has been working very closely uh, with Defence on an emergency resupply of 20 tonnes of essential food goods to Cooper Pedy via RAF Base Edinburgh. At this stage, our planning has the first flights departing Monday and there's likely to be uh, several flights to actually deliver that 20 tonne of goods. With our local government partners and police through the Far North Zone Emergency Management Team, we're continuing to monitor other remote communities and key stations and outlets with regard to food and essential good levels. Of course, we're also aware and supporting councils and communities with the widespread damage to local infrastructure and property across 45 separate councils. We're also very pleased with the support from the local government functional support group which is working hard with the councils to consolidate information and link councils into the state recovery programs. I'd just like to reiterate the Premier's message uh, to uh, those that would want to travel to the northern parts of the state. With the existing damage to the road infrastructure and more severe weather on the way, we're encouraging people to avoid the northern parts of the state for any unnecessary travel. To avoid the risk of getting stuck, isolated or stranded, we ask that you please delay your travel for no to the north for now. If you must travel through these areas, please take precautions. Plan ahead, pack supplies, provisions 
and non-perishable foods in case you become isolated. And just remember, never drive through floodwaters. It's very uncertain what, the, uh, what is underneath floodwaters and unfortunately and tragically is one of the leading causes of death during flood events. I'm going to hand over to um, Assistant Commissioner Parrott and give an update from SAPOL. Uh, thanks, Chris, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the State Emergency Centre remains activated and is meeting again later this morning uh, to talk about and plan, continue to plan uh, in response to this major emergency. Uh, as per the Premier's uh, points and also Chris Birdie's points, it's really important to understand that a major emergency is not declared lightly, uh, and that, uh, ever, that is the reason why it's so important for people to pay attention. It's easy in the current environment for us to be distracted by other issues, but the reason the major emergency has been declared is because of the significant risk to people in South Australia, particularly in the northern parts of South Australia, with the existing damage that's been caused by the previous weather event and the upcoming weather event, uh, which is forecast to occur over the next 72 hours. Um, the State Emergency Centre is assisting uh, the SES and other agencies to coordinate the response uh, to the existing uh, issues that are caused to our damage to our uh, infrastructure, our rail network and also our road networks. Uh, and the main messages here for uh, South Australians, which I just want to reinforce uh, with everybody, is that it is not safe at this point in time to be travelling in the north of the state and certainly not over the next few days. Uh, please uh, consider your safety and the safety of others. Uh, the suggestions and the recommendations are that if you are currently in the north of the state, uh, stay put somewhere where you are at the moment. Uh, have plenty of uh, supplies and provisions uh, to keep yourself um, stocked up for the next few days uh, and uh, avoid driving on roads uh, anywhere in the north of the state uh, in, because of this pending uh, rain event. Um, it's very likely that uh, the damage uh, that's uh, north of Glen Dambo um, is uh, going to be assessed and we're working as we said with the Department of Infrastructure and Transport to make an assessment as to the uh, damage that's caused on that road and despite uh, several uh, vehicles travelling through that area last night, the road is closed. You are not permitted to travel through that area. The two main reasons are your own safety, but the other reason is, is that if further damage is caused to that road, it may impede emergency services um, responses to uh, restoring uh, the road network uh, in the future. So please, um, the major emergencies are not made lightly. Um, this is a serious situation. We need everybody to uh, continue to support uh, the South Australian efforts in relation to uh, this particular issue, as they have done through uh, our other emergencies as well. Um, and please stay safe, uh, particularly over the, this uh, first part of this week. Uh, first of all, I guess I'd like to say uh, there are people out there who've already been impacted by what has happened uh, with the extreme rainfall over the last week or so. Uh, we are now looking at uh, additional falls. So the humidity we saw, say, in Adelaide a couple of days ago still remains up in the north of the state. Today we'll see some storms and showers uh, around the area, not too consolidated, not too focused, but, say, uh, 10 to 40 millimetres possibly across those, those northwest pastoral areas. As we head into tomorrow, we see that moisture lifted by a high-pressure cell moving in and uh, undercutting the moisture, lifting it up, turning it into more consolidated, more focused areas of storms and showers. So tomorrow we'll see an increase in the storms and showers, chiefly through the northwest pastoral, but also through the Air Peninsula where we have seen some uh, impacts. However, the Air Peninsula showers and thunderstorms should be a little bit more isolated, maybe 10 to 40 millimetres, instead of the higher falls we expect through the northwest pastoral, where we do have a flood watch out at the moment for the rain and storms which we expect to develop uh, over the next couple of days. The peak of rainfall probably is going to occur on Tuesday so we'll see widespread showers and thunderstorms, daily falls uh, 50 to 100 millimetres, possibly isolated falls within that area or even higher than that. So really really high rainfall across the areas which have already been quite wet. So the peak area we're concerned about I guess is uh, a line north of around about Lee Creek to Glendambo, so areas that have been previously affected as well. A lot of water lying around already, more water to be coming on top of that. As we head into Wednesday, 
The uh, high pressure cell which helped to lift this moisture and turn it into rain and showers will also drive some drier air through the area. So we'll see the storms and showers contract into the northeast pastoral largely and the northwest pastoral begin to ease. So we've got a few days of really significant weather, especially later on Monday into Tuesday and then contracting out again on Wednesday. So very significant weather. Apart from the flood watch, there will be severe thunderstorm or severe weather warnings issued over the next few days. So I'd urge all people to keep in contact with, with uh, the, the radio stations, uh, the Weather Bureau's website and up to date with the warnings. Very, very important. And as has been stressed already, do not drive through flood waters. That's the, the greatest chance of, of death or injury from that and also putting the emergency services workers at risk. So that's the forecast for the next few days.